Welcome back once again to the YouTube channel. It's your boy Mr. Ghana baby and I'm back again with a mind-blowing episode. You know what? This video is mind-blowing so I need a request. All I want you guys to do for me, you know what? Pause the video, press on the share button. Each and every one of you needs to share this video to support the video that I'm going to do today because this video is going to blow your mind. <laughs> Oh my goodness, you know what? I'm sitting on coconut pod. Is it coconut pod? I don't know. English speakers, please, if I'm mistaken, I don't know the name of this. And a young, intelligent, Ghanaian, African guy converted this into a stainless charcoal. This is stainless. I'm wearing white for the first time. Can you see the blood? No. This charcoal is stainless. You know what? Please help me share this video. Uh, no, I gotta, I gotta kneel down. You know what? Help me share. You know the struggle because this brother's story needs to be heard all over the world. I'm inspired, and I definitely know that you are also gonna inspire with this brother's story. Do me a favor, like the video, share. And if you are new to the channel, my name is Mr. Ghana Baby, the one and only annoying YouTuber in the whole of Africa. Welcome, subscribe, and be part of this awesome family. Let's hit 500,000 by the end of this month. Come with me. Let's go talk to this brother. Oh my goodness, I don't know why I'm so excited because this guy is young. Because I told you that Africa needs an industrial revolution. And look at what this brother did huge factory jesus christ i'm so excited just you know he, oh my god no no i'm not gonna meet him right now you know what after hearing this brother's story i'm gonna order hundred thousand pieces of this charcoal and i'm gonna force on each and every one of you when you talk of black lives matter now it's black businesses matters i am maya i don't want to talk too much i think i've taken enough of your time Come with me and let's go talk to this brother. The man himself. <laughs> Listen, Come on, man. Ah, no, 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 no. Come no, on, you're the, big man. you're the big man. You're the big man. <laughs> Bro. Yo, Maya. <laughs> you see how young he is? This is what I'm telling you guys, man. No, you know, like, I'm so inspired. Thanks, my brother. And I want you to inspire many out there. My you brother. Sure will. You sure will. I really want to know your story. I'll give it all. Give me all your story. You need to start somewhere? Uh, yeah. Anyway, welcome. Welcome to Zako. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Zako. Zako. Welcome to Zako. Wow. This is our business. This is huge, bro. Thank you. Thanks so much, No, man. but you, you're so young. <laughs> Can you give me age range? Uh, age range, not the exact figure. Very early 30s. And you <laughs> managed to establish something like this in Ghana. Yeah, it all started with a dream, you know. Do you uh, know that you're the biggest charcoal producer in Ghana? Possibly in West Africa and maybe the, the whole of Africa. Africa. Yeah, by capacity. Brother. Yo. How, <laughs> how did you do this? It all began with curiosity, you know. Being curious and asking questions. And that's how we got here. I know you're passionate about what you do. Yes, I am. But something must inspire you. Exactly. What really inspired you? You know, it actually started when I was reading law. And uh, yeah, I was a law student. A law student? Exactly, yeah. Are you now a certified lawyer? <laughs> no, 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 no. I got so many cases. I'm looking for a lawyer, man. I'll get you a good lawyer. <laughs> so it all started when I was a law student. And then on the usual commute to class, I observed. I started on the Osu Oxford Street. Mm. So you realize that on every junction on that street, there's somebody selling co coconuts. And then eventually you realize that the whole of Accra, you have so many people selling coconuts too. Yeah. So it all began with a question. With these guys selling so much coconut, what did they actually do with the waste? And that's where the whole idea started coming up. And then eventually I realized that they were all dumping their waste by the beaches and making our beaches so dirty. I took a trip to the beach, saw what was happening there, and need, then I just told myself something has to be done. At the time, I didn't even know what we could use the waste for, but along the line, I realized I got so much interested in this coconut stuff. 
I even lost interest in reading law to concentrate on this. And I you think in, yeah, in the final year, I have to use the fees to actually start this. Hold on. <laughs> Use your final year school fees yeah, yeah, to yeah. start this business. Yeah, 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 yeah. Instead yeah. of becoming a lawyer. Yeah, yeah. Your, your mom was not angry. Uh, uh, initially, they didn't know about it, but eventually they got to know. This guy is a counselor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's how it started, and then, you know, the whole idea began when uh, one day we went to buy Kenke. We saw the Kenke seller was using the coconut husk in her fire instead of firewood. And that was when it really hit me like, wow, so instead of firewood, she's using this coconut, which is basically free everywhere. And these guys are dumping it by the beaches. Okay, so since firewood is the raw material for charcoal, can we also use the same coconut the woman is using to make charcoal? I actually didn't know anything about charcoal. I joined these guys that make charcoal in the north just to see how they do it. Came back to Accra and set up a small process in my house to see how I could convert these coconuts to charcoal. Wow. I got so excited I was able to do it. So you move from a small thing to mato can to a bucket. Within the next we we're in a barrel. And that same week we had moved from just one barrel to like 12, 20 barrels. And we started burning. You, you started <laughs> making yeah. the, uh, the charcoal, the charcoal in, my, in my house. In your house? Yeah. So where are you getting the coconut husk? So I just spoke to a few coconut sellers that I needed your waste. Eventually, like actually they didn't even know where to dump it. So I was even a savior to them. Wow. These guys would push their coconut waste from wherever and just come dump it in my house. In your house? Yes, so yes. So your house was full I, of... I had a mountain of coconut in my house. A real mountain actually. Bro, this story is inspiring. You know what? Let's sit somewhere. <laughs> let's go there is something that I'm not understanding. Yeah. You said you started with what? A tin tomato a can. A tin tomato can. Yeah. A tomato can, I should say. You, you, you were putting the coconut inside? Yeah, so I was experimenting how to burn charcoal. So the process basically is burning something devoid of oxygen. If you allow too much oxygen in, it burns to ash. So you mm -hmm. control the oxygen flow and then you get charcoal. So I had this uh, little tomato can which was big enough, and then we put some pieces of coconut in there. We lit them up, poured sand to cover and prevent oxygen from going in. Wow. It turned out very well, but we had very little charcoal. So the next day, I moved to a bucket. So the actual bucket we were using in the house, mm. we made some holes in there, and then we were able to get some more coconut, which was still also very good, but also very little. Yeah. So eventually, we moved from the bucket to a drum, a barrel. And in the space of a week, we had moved from just a tomato can to like um, 10 barrels. And what were you doing all this? All of this in my house. In your house? Yes. So how did you establish your first factory? Is this your first factory? No, 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 no. The first factory actually started in the house. We designed and built our own machine. We oh, designed, okay. got it built in the Abu Bloshi where the uh, metal guys are. Mm -hmm. And then eventually we gradually moved to some site behind us. We spoke to family, they released some land, and then some bits of the school fees actually bought some machines, got <laughs> some help here and there, and then we set up a factory, which is also quite uh, somewhere in the bush. So your, your, your family found out after they established the factory? Uh, yes, yes, yes. That's when they realized this guy is no more going to class. <laughs> 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 right, so welcome to the first ever uh, Zako factory ever wow. built in Ghana. So the first ever, I would say, charcoal factory. That, that's impressive. But you said it started from your house. Yeah. Which was your first machine that you ever used? Um, this machine right here. Oh, it's still here? Exactly, yeah. So we actually designed it ourselves. Yourself? Yes, we designed it because when we Are got the... Are you a the... mechanical engineer? I'm not, but I'm a very curious person. So we designed this machine ourselves, drew everything on paper how we wanted it to work, and then went to Abu Bloshi where we have the old men that work on metals, and then they built this for us. We used it for some time and it was good. And then we had to upgrade. That's impressive, bro. <laughs> and from this machine you moved to which And then machine? from this machine we moved to over there, where all those blue machines you see, so at the time we moved here, the electricity situation here wasn't too good. In fact, there, was, there wasn't electricity in this part of town. Mm. 
so we actually got this manual one where we started you know yeah everything is manpower yeah we started it there's a diesel engine so you connect and then diesel power that's the cooler over there so this was the our grinder wow. we use this so if you look at it we station we position them such that the same machine can power this and the same machine can power the other oh. machines there you just connect the belt and then they work my brother you know i just want to know how many people started this business with you or you started it all alone um first was myself alone i got in one more person and then got in some more people gradually we are about uh, 12 people here so but then we have so many people on the street collecting coconuts for us do you believe that africa is the future we already are and africa definitely the, the world can't progress without africa we are the future even from henceforth it's it's I, I, it's an understatement i interviewed somebody and he told yeah. me no africa is not a future come on africa is the present <laughs> <laughs> i think i agree with that too you know everything revolves around africa it's like when Af africa coughs the world catches a cold wow. yeah that's new yeah yeah we control we control all the resources in the world not just natural resources but the human resources because the people on the continent are also very worthy yeah my man my you know i don't know why i'm so excited to talk to you i wish <laughs> i can you. spend the entire day <laughs> on this youtube channel for people to know that you're always indeed, welcome here. i really appreciate you you're always welcome my from brother. a thing of what a tomato, tomato can. can to this one it's incredible bro thank you thank you really uh, appreciate how did it. you manage to operate this one um so eventually we got family involved people didn't really believe in what we we're doing I, I think they didn't really understand why somebody would risk himself to do charcoal somebody with this passionate about charcoal and the fact that people don't use it they assume nobody else does so eventually i had to fall on family members take some support here and there and then uncles aunties and then so gradually we built this place they and supported your yeah, dream. family has really supported uh, on behalf of um, his <laughs> uncles and aunties i just want to say thank you so much thank you thank i, I you. believe that this is how africa is supposed to be exactly we need to encourage exactly. entrepreneurship yeah but in africa they tell us to go to school be a lawyer be a doctor and at the end of the day we end up on facebook and become YouTube. <laughs> 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 You know, I just want to know. You cannot tell me that you just woke up and started yeah. creating all these things. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. there should be challenges that you face as a young there, There's been well, loads and loads and loads no, of challenges. On, tell us some of the, I mean, the most challenging one. First of all, convincing people that it's possible to even make charcoal out of this was a challenge. Wow. The second of it was, as a young man, you've been able to prove something was viable. Now, how do you scale up? To this stage where you're able to make enough revenue to sustain the business mm. that was one big headache it's been a very long journey i think i went to every pitch event spoke to almost every investor i got in contact to but people didn't really i that's what i feel i feel like they don't really understand what we go through we've had we've had our machines stolen we've had a lot of setbacks there's been a lot of tears you know a lot of tears uh, we've cried a lot but we've also learned a lot and this whole process or this whole journey i would say it's been tough but i've grown to be tougher did you have the government support not yet but it will come <laughs> we look forward to it the government never supported you uh, government support will come hopefully it seems he doesn't want to talk about that. <laughs> no, you, you know, like, you just let us know, like, acquiring the land and all that. Yeah, government support will come. We believe once we are getting onto the market, government will get to know how much we are solving. You know, like, trust me, uh, maybe you want the government mm -hmm. to support. It's okay. But we me, love I to got, have government I got support. an army on YouTube who are ready to support. Like, we, we love this that. is what we do. It's by force. You know what? <laughs> we are ordering 100,000 pieces today. Wow. No, 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 no. no. I'm going to force it on them. They, they, they know how we do it. Yeah. You can export. Yes, we do export. We do export. Um, I'm going to um, give you money. Thank you. pieces thank and you each and every subscriber of mine you need to order the hundred thousand if we don't order the hundred thousand no new video 
Thank you, my brother. No new video. Thank you, my brother. my brother. This is the kind of support we need. No, we need to support people like you. Like, you have no idea. Like, I wish I can just... Come on, no, man. Just, Come on, man. Listen, like, you, you live, you're living the dream, bro. Thank like you. Like I said, we need factories in Africa. Yeah. I mean, there are yeah. a lot of young Africans watching yeah. us right now. Yeah. If you should advise young Africans, what will it be, brother? My advice has always been to just be different. Um, I like this favorite... Um, quote of mine from Steve Jobs. He says, why join the Navy when you can be a pirate? You don't always have to go where everyone is going. You can have carve your own path and be the best at it. We can't all be doctors. We can't all be lawyers. It can be different. Can you take us around? Show let us me a take you, let yeah. me take you through Thank the you. process. <laughs> Here, controls the entire factory. factory from the input point to the output point to even the packaging line. So you can see we have burner, we have fans, we have our press, we have entry conveyors, we have mixers, everything is here. We have sensors that detects everything. So this controls the entire factory and this factory has a capacity of three tons per hour. A ton is like a thousand kilograms. Wow. And this place that's three tons every hour. Bro, I would say that you're on another level. Thank you. Because Thank you. I know that the local way of, I mean, getting a charcoal <laughs> is just fire and you are showing me computers. A computerized production That's process. Amazing, yeah, man. yeah, yeah. Like, I'm really impressed. Thank you. I've got so many people watching us right now. Thank Do you have you. any message for them? Anything you want to tell them? We can make it in Africa only if we believe it's possible. It all begins with a dream, but we are all capable of achieving our dreams. Let's make it happen. It's the only continent we have. You know, South Africa, Nigeria, we're all one people. Come on, let's support each other. Imagine us exporting Zako to SA or Nigeria, and then maybe Nigerians import, uh, bringing in whatever they produce. We trade amongst ourselves and we grow together. It's gonna happen. Sure, sure. On this channel, that is what we are in for. And I know you're so doing a good prepare job. Prepare for it. Good. Nigerians are gonna order uh people from i know especially jamaicans i'm gonna send this <laughs> to jamaica haiti united states um no i'm sorry i can't mention all of it but to the entire caribbean yeah. we are shipping this charcoal but hey this is the episode that i really want to start for africans who never left the continent but they managed to make something big in here i'm impressed brother there's a brand called fubu mm -hmm. i think we can start faba for Africans by Africans. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this amazing episode. Don't forget to like the video, it's very important. And I said, don't forget to share. If this video don't get a million views, I'm gonna be mad at each and every one of you watching this video. So you have the responsibility to share. I mean, don't sit on it, share the video. Tell your friends and family that there is a guy who is performing magic in Africa, and his name is Amin. Amin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't forget to subscribe to be part of the family. Uh, okay, maybe. <laughs> <laughs>